Hi, it's Mark Bernard here, and I'm here to talk about the cybersecurity management system with ISO 27001. Now, the management system is really important. In my last video, I talked about the quality management system, which is based on ISO 9000 and 9001, or the QMS, or also known as the, the Plan, Do, Check, Act cycle. In this case, I'm going to be talking about specifically about the management system and about what it in, includes. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the problems that we're trying to solve. This presentation was brought to you to solve problems. Uh, one is rapid change. Okay, this is one of the problems that ISO 27001 will help solve. Okay, because it will put into place a management system and a framework that can be uh, documented, practiced, and rehearsed and reviewed and all the stakeholders can buy into it. We know exactly what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, and who's going to be doing what. This is really important in the cybersecurity environment, as you can probably imagine, because um, when you get attacked, you already need to have a plan, and it should have been already tested so that everybody knows what to do. Uh, so it's really important to have a program in place. Okay, uh, the rapid change, it's happening uh, right now, okay, uh, you, we've seen the growth of ransomware. There will be another uh, e-crime that will come along that will grow and grow and take over our businesses and attack us, okay? So we need to be able to respond to the rapid change. Uh, the sophistication is growing, the level of complexity, um, the um, threat agents, the adversaries, the state-sponsored governments, uh, these organizations are pushing the envelope. They're making the change happen faster and faster. And of course, along comes artificial intelligence and quantum computing. And you think things are fast and going faster now? I'll wait until quantum computing takes in, takes over rather, and um, artificial intelligence kicks in. Then you're going to see some rapid change. So this is the time to prepare, adopt ISO 27001, get your program in order, uh, get it ready to respond rapidly as changes occur. Another uh, problem is investment. Okay, I've seen many, many cybersecurity programs where they're randomly buying technology uh, without doing proper risk assessments, without planning for it, without having project plans on how to implement it. And we get a lot of overlap. So, you know, the first thing you should have is a cybersecurity architecture, and you should be building against that plan. That architecture should have been built based on a risk assessment. Uh, there's ways to uh, attack the program, to implement it properly. And uh, these are two of the problems that we want to solve, right? So the rapid change, uh, the investment, we want to be able to control the investment and manage it uh, efficiently and effectively. Another problem that we're trying to uh, resolve is pro uh, program control. Uh, because if you don't have a formal program, then uh, different people can jump in and, and try and steer the program or influence it. Some of those people may be external uh, parties who have no risk Nothing to lose at all, but maybe they're trying to sell you some new technology or maybe they're trying to influence how you think. Uh, maybe it's an external auditor or regulator that has a set of controls they want you to implement and you have no way to officially push back or evaluate what it is that they're presenting. So most organizations adopt it and this is where they, it's a slippery slope. This is where they get into trouble. They adopt more and more controls and pretty soon you can't manage your system anymore. So we need to have program control. We need to have a proper plan and execution and it needs to be uh, you know based on a solid framework now uh, iso 27000 and 2 uh, 27001 the 2022 version of it which is just released a couple years ago um, goes through the process of identifying what are the most common risks to most organizations and you'll see that it's divided up into a couple different areas now some things you need to know about iso 27001 uh, the executive team and board of directors, they want a solution to fix cybersecurity within their organization and control it. Uh, it. But the solution has to be doable, and there can't be any surprises. And that's what you get from adopting a framework, is you get uh, a steady state set of controls that have been proven by hundreds of thousands of cybersecurity professionals. Um, so they're going to work, and they're going to be, they're going to produce uh, reproducible uh, outcomes um, that you'll be able to measure and, and manage. And it's got to be doable. So the framework obviously has been done many, many times. Um, ISO 27001 was initially conceived by the UK government. A lot of people don't know that. It was a long time ago, in 1995. UK government said, we have a problem with supply chain, the way that they're handling the government information. We need to be able to fix that. So what we did was we created a standard. And we had all of our third parties and supply chain people 
um, adopt that standard. So you don't hear about a lot of breaches actually in the UK when you think about it, right? Uh, it's because they've had this framework in place for over 20 years. Um, ISO 27001 has been adopted in 39 industries. People may not realize that. It's not just information technology. It's adopted in a wide variety of uh, industries you would not even imagine, like um, food manufacturing, pharmaceutical banking, uh, government, you name it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different industries. In over 167 countries, this is the de facto best practice uh, globally. Uh, for cybersecurity. Another uh, in interesting point is that this uh, framework gets, has been already reviewed by over 100,000 cybersecurity professionals globally in those 167 countries. Every country has a uh, standards committee uh, in their government and they do a, a call out, they ask for opinions and they, they share their document and ask for input on it. Every five years it gets revised. So there are 165 controls uh, in the management system, and it covers a number of different areas, context of the organization, leadership, planning, support, operations, performance evaluation, improvement. You can see the clause references here on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side are the number of control points. And control points can be measured as areas of risk within a procedure or a process. So if there's a, an area that could be at risk, they will write a, a control objective that will say, okay, in order to address this control, let's, let's say, for instance, segregation of duties, the same person who writes a check should not be the one that signs it, for instance. <clears throat> um, we also have Annex A. Annex A is probably the most widely known one. It's changed quite a bit. The clause references, again, are here on the, on the left, and then the number of controls. Now, they've actually gone down in the number of controls, but how they've done that is they've actually consolidated it. So it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors. If you look at the controls, there used to be 113 in the, in the 2013 version. In the 2022 uh, version, there's only 93. But when you look at it, you can see that they've collapsed a lot of the control objectives onto themselves. And they've added a few new ones in addition. So it's actually grown uh, a little bit and not actually shrunk. Okay, so let's look at the table of contents. And here's, a, here's something. Here's, you know what, the number one thing, uh, the number one threat actually to cybersecurity is complexity. So we want to reduce complexity. We want to eliminate complexity wherever possible. So if somebody comes up with some crazy idea and it sounds really complex and stuff, they really don't know what they're doing. So you need to actually help them uh, to reduce the complexity. So we've taken 163 control points, for instance, in the management system and reduced it down to seven procedures. We made this really simple. We created this beautiful uh, reference architecture based on ISO 27001. It has seven procedures. You can see governance, risk management, continual improvement, training and awareness. It has communications, document and record control, and internal audit. These are the seven processes that are all part of 163 control points and here's what we've done so we put little labels on this and we've actually mapped it so here's all the different controls in the table of contents that apply to governance here's all the control points that apply to risk management here's the control point that applies to continual improvement and we've gone on so clauses uh, 4 to 10 are the management system uh, that we talked about earlier now we're talking about clause 7 to 9.22 or 9.22, and we've mapped these. So again, governance, risk management, training and awareness. You have uh, continual uh, improvement down here, and, uh, and you have uh, document and record management and internal audit. Sorry, I'm just trying to move my screen around a little bit. Apologize, I've probably been cutting off some of the verbiage. So uh, these controls uh, listed here in clauses 4 to 10, specifically here on this page is 7 to 9.2.2. .2 .2 map to governance, these ones map to training and awareness, this one maps to communications, these controls map to document and record management, these controls map to the risk management process, and these ones finally map to the audit. It's that simple. So we've just taken 163 controls, we boiled them down into seven procedures. Gets really easy, doesn't it? There's a few that are left, so let's talk about these ones too. So finally, from 9.3 to 10.2, so most of these apply to governance and continual improvement. So you can see these ones here uh, apply to governance, and these controls here apply to continual improvement. Now it's really important. Uh, as you can see, governance plays a very heavy role 
in the management system, of course, uh, because there are so many things that you need to take into consideration when you set up a program and you run a program. A lot of people don't know how to do that. That's why ISO created this standard, is to help uh, people who don't know how to build programs, to give them the, the, you know, the training wheels, if you like, to build the program. And they're all there, 163, but unfortunately, a lot of people don't know how to apply them. So that's what this video is all about. It's here to help you, okay? Now, uh, just take one step farther to help you a little bit farther. Uh, we boil all these seven procedures down. We put them into a program manual, governance, risk management, continual improvement, and we document it and we write it up as a program manual so that this can be handed over to anybody who's responsible for the cybersecurity program. And we take one step farther and we create a business plan. And in the business plan, we lay out what we're going to be doing on an annual basis. We map it to the strategic and tactical plans of the organization. And then we create a budget and we get approval for that budget. So now you have a formal program, and it's all nice and tight and sealed up. Uh, you've got all the procedures. There's, there's no ambiguity. There's no, no surprises. Remember, the two rules for executives are it's going to be doable, and it can't be any surprises, and that's what ISO provides. We put this, uh, if you need help uh, to build such a program, we put this into a project charter. And uh, we designed the project charter around the organization. This project charter is used to get approval for budgets and approval for implementation of the program. This is the number one way to implement ISO is using project management. Now, if you have any questions, uh, please contact us. You can contact us at info at bernardinstitute.com. Thank you for your time. Have a great day. And don't forget to share this video and like this video. And please, uh, if you subscribe to our channel, hit the bell and, so that you don't miss out on any updates. Thank you. Have a good, great one. Cheers.